So let's start. <sighs> Chapter one. Let's start. Off. Low romance and high corruption. And as always, skip buttons. There we go. Uh, Ashi, my Kodachi. At this rate, Saito will. Quietly, I slipped my Kodachi from its sheath to avoid father's notice. It was crucial that I find an opening, one that could give me an opportunity to save Saito-san. Then Saito-san's curt command snapped me back to reality. Then a sudden visitor chimed in. Mate Kodo. Make him endure it! <laughs> because he seemed to be suffering in agony, I hoped there was something I could do, but... Perhaps Sartasun hadn't actually wanted anyone to help him. Part of me believed that he was the type to let himself be consumed by pain, as long as I ensure that no one would bother him enough to stop it. So I... <laughs> All I could do was sit quietly, watching Sartasun grimace intensely as I silently offer my hand and support. As Sartasun started walking away from the house, I stopped to get a last glimpse of my old home. The battle between Sartasun and father had left it in a worse condition than we had found it in. Unsurprisingly. I read that completely wrong. The battle between Saito and father had left it in worse condition than we found it, unsurpri unsurprisingly. It would have been best for me to lock up, at least, I thought to myself before we headed back. I reached my hand to slide the entrance shut. Just then, a figure appeared suddenly as if to reach over me. <gasps> in the span of a moment, my mouth was covered, and a rope wrapped around my arms to constrict me. As I squirmed wildly, I heard father's voice bellow. Why was father still here? I yanked my shoulder up in an attempt to nudge away from father, who had his hand over my mouth. When he lifted his hand, I gasped madly for air, but... What was waiting for me instead was a glass vial. I fell face first to the ground. My throat burned as the serum dripped down. Dakota, what was that? I couldn't hear you because your mixing is terrible. N no! I fought so hard to resist, but... I could feel my mind slipping, and a haze engulfed me before blackness took hold for good. We died by water of life. Which I'm gonna guess is like a botched water of life. Because we know too that it has drunk the water of life once before and that didn't happen, so botched water of life. On to chapter two. Low romance, corruption high. Let's go. Uh it's not like that. I don't think you're right to think that there's no honor left in serving as a warrior. Sartre's son quietly stared back at me as I spoke. Inoue told me... A warrior would never turn his back on his promises, nor would he make a woman cry. Regardless of whatever generation of warrior exists, 
The values of honesty, kindness, and strength will always continue to be passed on. Or do you believe that these two will become obsolete in the new era? Again, Saito-san had no response, and instead he tepidly shook his head. Those doubts still seemed to linger within him. His voice was barely audible. However, he did not complete his thought, and once more he glared at the empty nothingness above us. His tone was perhaps intentionally more curt than usual. Maybe I was the wrong person to approach Saito-san about this kind of issue. You're right. The insects chirped and hummed from the trees as we made our way back to camp. We were nearly there when... <laughs> Alright, give me the chase. I made him endure it. What should I do? Would you feel better if we drink blood? Or was medicine the better option? I stood there helplessly panicking. His pale face was dripping with thick beads of sweat, but he did his best to feign calmness. However, <laughs> a wave of excruciating pain seemed to hit him at once. Asato-san dropped to his knees, practically collapsing in a desperate fit. Asato-san, please, hang in there! I grabbed a hold of his body frantically. With every heavy, staggered breath, his shoulders would rise and drop in forced, repetitive motions. I watched Asato-san dig his fingernails into his chest to distract himself from the overwhelming agony. I had never seen Sato-san suffer so intensely as he was now. For someone like him, who always displayed the utmost discipline, to be grimacing so intensely. I could only begin to imagine how unbearably suffocating all of this must have seemed to him. <coughs> Sato-san waved me away with his hand earlier, so that I would ignore him, but... Between his breathing, his gritted teeth, and his strained groans, a futile attempt to downplay the pain. I was unsure how he could handle it at all. I could only wallow pathetically from the side, thinking of how I was unable to help in any way. All I could do was embrace him, and hope beyond any shred of doubt that he would be okay. Saito-san! As I watched these events unfold, I sheepishly called out to him. His head was kept low, and the left hand that was gripping his sword went limp. What was going on? I had never once seen him appear so weak, especially right in the middle of a fight. Oh no. <laughs> Satisan's lips were pursed ever so slightly, and I could hear the pain weigh heavily in his voice. Just as a groan escaped his lips. Satisan swung with such swiftness and agency that it was barely visible. However, the force of the blade's path was so tremendously powerful that it was impossible to believe that it came from this weakened Saito. Ah! Saito slashed repeatedly at the fallen fury, cutting into the flesh with a noticeable amount of spite. Each swing brought together brought another wide splash of blood. Saito-san, what's wrong? You've already defeated the fury. You need to hurry up and get out of here. But it was no use. Saito-san paid no attention to my desperate pleas. His face was covered by compounding layers of blood, and I began to see a smile. Totally, 
彼は他の羅刹とは違うと思っていたのですが。A voice was heard from above me. I saw a figure perch atop a long tree branch. Then the figure dropped down and his tones sharpened more harshly than when he had spoken earlier. その血肉を羅刹の餌とするくらいならせめて私の手でその生を終わらせてあげましょう Within the span of a blink, Amagiri ducked low, crouching to hit Saitosan from below. As I saw Amagiri prepare himself to attack, my mind immediately envisioned the horrors of what could potentially ensue. No! I felt my feet practically fly from the ground as I burst forward to protect Saitosan. From behind me, I heard Father call out to me. But there was no way I could stop because Saito-san still hadn't noticed Amigiri coming from him for him. He hadn't realized that his left hand was worth more than the value of his pendant penchant for death. He could live a life apart from swinging his sword. Until he discovered this truth, there was no way I could let him die. Just then, the gruesome sound of flesh being split apart cracked in my ears. Did I trip on a rock? My body was floating down ever so slowly to the ground. Huh? Huh? What, what happened? Pain throbbed horrifically over my left breast. Something warm began to trickle down my chest. Suddenly, numbness spread throughout my arms and legs, and I found myself unable to stand. Someone was standing above me, but my vision grew hazy, and I couldn't make out a face or discern who it must have been. However, in the end, the shape of his lips made an opening. And I heard my name echo above. Or was it all a dream? Being killed by Saito and his loss of madness is. Done this one, so make him endure it. Saitosan, hang in there. I was running short of options. In a fit of desperation, I held tightly onto Saitosan's convulsing body. <laughs> Though his tightly closed lips, through his tightly closed lips, Saitosan did his best to make himself quiet as he let out whimper, whimpering groans. Being beside him and listening was torturous. His entire face was covered in a thick, glistening layer of cold sweat. Not only Saitosan had a high tolerance for pain, but seeing him like this, it was an illness that knew it was an illness that knew not how to inflict with mercy. This is one that could kill him. Soon. It will be okay, Saitosan. Everything will be okay. My grip around Saitosan was kept tight as I repeated myself over and over again. With each breath he drew, the pain sunk deeper like a dagger being pressed into his lung, and yet. Saitosan mustered a nod as, as I reassured him. Was letting him ride out these side effects the right decision? Did I have to make him endure this? Was there nothing else that I could have done for him? 
Do you want to go back inside Nagaoka? There was no way I could abandon Kondo-san and Hichikatsu-san so willingly. Sato-san, let's go back inside and warn Kondo-san and Hichikatsu-san. No, I did, but you said the guns. You said the guns that the soldiers were wielding were the same kind of advanced rifles used against us in the Battle of Tobushimi, right? If that troop attacks both of them in those kinds of rifles, with those kinds of rifles, then they don't stand a chance. So the sun bit into his lip out of frustration. Despite having despite being given explicit orders from Hijikata-san, I knew that Saito-san wanted to fight alongside them more than anything, even at the cost of his life. Surely the idea of leaving them behind was something that would... Surely the idea of leaving them behind was something that would have festered within Saito-san just as easily. Saito-san was locked in a moment of quiet deliberation. And then... His decision was muttered softly, although it was delivered with certainty. We had to operate with even more stealth than when we attempted to escape as we made our way back in. しんせんぐみにとって我々はもう用済みだそうですから。我々を高く買ってくれるところに行くのは当然のことかと。How can you not see this coming, Sanan? Sanan's eyes suddenly widened in horrific shock. The Imperial soldier fired his rifle, and the bullet ripped through Sanansan's left breast, splattering blood all along the cold, dark ground. You know, I was wondering what happened to Sanansan in this route, and uh, we have our answer. He was killed! It seems Sanansan was caught off guard, and he fell over into the thickening pool of his own blood. <laughs> No sooner than when the officer barked his command. So, Sasing! Both Sartus and Shimada made themselves big as they blocked the path of the marching Imperials, glowing with a vigor to fight. No, we're involving Shimada! I'm terrified! I'm so terrified! No, not, not Shimada! Huh? Upon the officer's command, a howling band of furies emerged to attack Saito-san and Shimada relentlessly. In their fury, the furies trampled over Sanan-san's lifeless body as if it were but a stone on the floor. Somehow, Saito-san and Shimada were able to ward off the furies from landing any critical blows, but... Being bombarded on all sides by a parade of shrieking furies was something for which they could not prepare, and the two of them found themselves increasingly overwhelmed. <coughs> Suddenly, I saw Saito-san's hair become white as he changed into his fury form. After a momentary struggle, his pace and strength were now enough to kill the furies. 
Some of the Imperial officers grinned at the sight. A sight of some sword slashed at the Furies. An unfriendly voice sniggered in the corner. The barrel of the soldier's gun was raised at Saito-san, after having killed Sanon-san only moments beforehand. Saito-san, watch out! Just as my voice screamed out, <laughs> a pained grunt exited Saito-san's mouth. No! I watched a bullet pierce through his sternum, and behind the blast was a smattering of blood, of red blood splashed across the ground. Then, Saito-san's body met the ground with a harsh thud, like a tree chopped in the forest. Saito! Saito! Surely that couldn't have killed Saito-san. This must be some attempt to trick or deceive them. Hopefully at any moment, Saito-san's head would perk up with a cool gaze, as he was waiting for an opportunity to strike back at them with a vengeance. Why? Why isn't Saito-san getting back up yet? I should be able to see his breathing at least. I mean, after all these years, Saito-san had constantly put his body on the line to keep me safe. Ichikata-san even commanded him to do so once more, and entrusted Saito-san with our future. There's no way he'd leave me for the afterlife. Right? Saito-san? So please, just open your eyes as soon as you can. I screamed all of this loudly in my mind. I couldn't stand to wait anymore, so I ran up to him. Yukimura-kun! Abunai! Shimada worriedly called out to me in an alarm. Another gunshot suddenly cracked in my ears. The echo of the blast banged against the insides of my brain like a hammer pounding against the wall. What happened? I mouthed Saito-san's name, but no words came out. And then a third shot thundered in the distance. Who was it? Who did the bullet hit? I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see how the skirmish was unfolding. Or if Sartosan was okay. All I could see was to fade into black. And then... Nothing. Alright, on to our bad ending. Low romance and high corruption. That is your recipe. Anyway, I... We'll stay here? Really? That's how we... Oh, I see. That's how the unrequited love starts. Alright. <clears throat> I will stay here. Uh, make him endure it, is our answer. Saito-san's teeth were dug firmly against his lips while he gripped his body in a feeble attempt to suppress the pain. Even though his hands were gloved, he was consumed by the urge to scratch frantically against his chest. I guess? I guess that makes sense. saito please hold on. It'll go away. All I could do was hold Saito tightly against my chest. It seemed the pain had increased to an unbearable degree, far worse than any of this, his previous seizures. His breath was a desperate staccato. As I watched on helplessly, a feeling of impending doom took hold of me. <laughs> Oh, 
Minsk. Satasan repeated these words to himself to salvage some comfort, but his body only stiffened in my arms. Just a little longer. Lurking beyond this painful seizure was an even greater sense of foreboding for what was to come. A decisive battle loomed ahead. Perhaps when that was over, Satasan could be at peace. Hopefully I, too, could find solace when that time comes. Here's our new text! In the threat of sight of sun's life ending came more into focus, Amagiri impishly stuttered over to strutted over to Cosmo. Hold on, let me read that again positively. Or you know. As the threat of sight of sun's life ending came more into focus, Amagiri impishly strutted over to Cosmo. Cosmo Soregurai ni sewitara do desko. Koko de Kareo Koroshita to Korode.我々には何の利益もないでしょう。Oh no, here comes the my wife thing again. I'm remembering last night and uh, Midget improvising his lines as Kazuma. Ningen ya magai mono ga ika ni hiyo wa de kudara no sonzai kao. Cosmo slowly turned his head towards me before breaking into sadistic laughter. Oh no, oh no, what should I do? I had to do something. There had to be some way I could save Saito-san. I... Intimidating, the, an intimidating aura surrounding Cosma left me feeling paralyzed, rendering me incapable of action. Please, someone! Nagakura, Harada, Hesuke, anyone, please save Saito-san! My heart ached as I cried desperately from within. Then, from the corner of my eye, I saw the hall sliding doors thrust open and someone barged in. Could it be? With a fluttering heart and wistful thinking, I eagerly turned my head to see who had entered. I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah, that was the bad feeling. The feeling of dread had gripped me completely. That these two demons had appeared must have only meant that Nagakura, Harada, and Hesuke were. I watched the devastation unfolding in Sartison's eyes. His strength was reaching its limit. Cosmo's sword reflected a gleaming ominous light, and then... Cosmo dug the sharp, lustrous blade into the sun's heart. Which was met with the grisly sound of flesh tearing. Saitasan! Large splotches of red began to bleed through Saitasan's clothing. I could barely stand the lurid display. At first, I was certain that his fury powers would have been enough to heal these horrific wounds. But this hope was unfounded. He hadn't healed. No! 
I had clung to the belief that all of this was some nightmare. But in realizing the truth, I was broken. All I could do was scream. Thinking I could sink no lower, a shadow covered me. Through puffy, tear-stained eyes, I peeked my head to get a glimpse of who could be standing above me. Sumaru, Yukimura Chizuru. Sebete, kora ijou no zetsubou wo me ni shinakuto mo sumu yo. A sense of apprehension came over me. Then a punch. Then he punched his tight fist into my stomach. Before I could do anything, my consciousness went black. Okay, I really hope that Amigiri actually did end our life with that one. Because I don't think Chizuru would be able to suffer whatever Kodo or Kazuma would do. Back to chapter 4, and we do... what exactly this one? Unrequited love. We do... oh, low romance and low corruption. Alright. They are goddamn threats. I... Contemplated, apparently. I... Something came over me, and I felt compelled to say that. It was no secret to me that saito had planned on giving his life to the cause once these lands turned to war. Then, all I wished was to remain by his side until the end. However, Kazuma, Magiri, and Father were all after me. Having to fend against the Imperial Army was tough enough on its own. But having these demons pursue us so vehemently made saito chance of survival even slimmer. I'm sorry. ま、お前らしいっちょ、お前らしいか。とはいえ、あんまり長々と悩まれても困るよな。俺たちはすぐ仙台に来ていし、斎藤も急いで白川城に走りて。伊地方さんのってパスアートさんのマイソフ。よし
斉藤さん雪村先輩今まで本当にお世話になりましたバイソーマこの戦が終わったらまた会おうな絶対だぞバイノーマラうん、uh, 無理かもしれねえけどまた昔みてえに新発さんやサノさんと一緒に飲みに来てよなおへすけあの二人酒入ると輪をかけてうるさくなるしはじめくんは嫌がるかもしれないけどさいやそんなことはない After exchanging our goodbyes the group led by Hichikata turned their backs to us and headed down the path Even after they were no longer sight, Saito san watched on patiently. He stared at the footsteps left behind by Hijikata san, perhaps tracing their path in his head. <laughs> from Saito san's side profile, I could see a small grin emerging from the corner of his lip. Skip! Uh. Oh, right, the choice is very quick. Uh, we give him blood. There we go. Saito! Without thinking, I unsheathed my Kodachi and prepared to run over to Saito san. Saito san roared at me, which made me flinch enough to get the message. But at this rate, you'll. Just as the words were leaving my mouth, the door behind me was loudly thrust open. I turned to look over my shoulder and I saw. <laughs> The good boy has arrived! Heske! Is this just you who came? Where are the other two? I don't like how you say Wakarane. I held my breath. Hoping to dispel thoughts of what it can mean for Nagakura and Harada. Sakasan,、so、too, seemed to have considered this possibility, and I watched his chest tighten as he stood nervously, which is very uncharacteristic of、uh, Saito. Gomi no nakama ga mo i piki fue ta ka. Ma i, kisama go toki mono no kazu de wa nai. Ni hiki ma tome te shimatsu shite yaro. No, I'm not gonna say it out loud. I'm not gonna say what my brain is thinking right now. Nope, uh uh, nope, I'm, I'm not. No. SK pulled out his sword as he shouted boldly. What? Saito san, no! We had journeyed this far together. He promised me that he would allow me to stay beside him until the very end. But Hisuke. Hisuke grabbed my arm and he pulled me as we rushed out of the hall. Please, please, you have to let me go back to Saito san. Please, I have a really bad feeling about this. Like, it feels like I might never be able to see Saito san ever again. Dying wish. The words sank into my chest. After descending down the large passage of stairs, we frantically made our way out of the castle. Although we were safe, no matter how long we had waited for him, Saito san never followed after us. Nogokor and Harada, as well, were nowhere to be found. Even though this is where we'd left them. Chizuru, Omaiwa Kokoni to Gre. Or 
れは始めくんのところに戻る。平助。わかったな。平助 waited until I nodded, looking me deep in the eye, and he sprinted back inside the castle. I plopped to the ground after the feeling in both my arms and legs left me entirely. Just like how, in the end, he left me. s a r t h e s o n promised me, promised me, that I would remain at his side the whole time. So, like I had always feared, I was only a burden for him. I, it wasn't until the break of dusk that h e s k e made his return to me. I don't know what to say. 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 I don't know The intense battle between Saito and Kazuma had reached a point of stalemate. Even after drawing his last desperate breath, Saito Sen's hand was clasped tightly around his beloved sword, which had been doused in his blood. When he had mentioned to Heisuke to take me and flee from the castle, I could only imagine it was because he had anticipated his death the entire time. As long as it meant I could have stayed with Saito san, I didn't mind dying. How often had we gazed into the starlight, letting the sky kiss our eyes, granting us moments of bliss? Now, those stars were no longer ours to see, and I had never envisioned a life without him. Heisuke extended his offer to, in a hushed, gentle tone, but I shook my head. I think. I think I need some time to think on my own. Heisuke's first inclination was to refute my request, but. After I had yielded to respond, he wised up and felt no need to push the subject further. Behind us, a thin breeze rustled a branch of leaves, and I heard a pair of birds chirping in kind. In this quaint moment, I was reminded of Saito san's love for staring into the stars, the infinite unknown. I felt the travel of his eyes across the expanse of the starry skies alongside my own. One day, Saito san and I will be with each other once more, standing together underneath the moonlit sky. I clung to this hope and buried it within my heart as we made our descent down the mountain path. <laughs>